Okay, so when we left off yesterday, there was a lot of vocabulary that we were dealing with in that packet and relationships. So we're going to continue with that today. And we talked about if we're in a circle, let's say I have a cord here that is 8 inches long. And a cord over here that is 10 inches long. What can I say about those two arcs? I'm just going to call this, I'll call that point AB. So this is arc AB is the notation I'm going to use for that. Then I'll call this point C and D. So I'll call that arc CD. Okay. Now, you're half right, but you fell into a common trap. CD is larger than AB because it has a larger cord. But is it really 25%? Is it, is it proportional? And it's not. Because doubling the length of the cord does not necessarily double the length of the arc. Because if you think about it, let's say that well, let's just do this on a different circle. It'll be easier. Let's say I have a circle with a radius of 6 inches. A 90 degree arc here, a 90 degree central angle gives me a 90 degree arc. What is the cord that's going to cut that off here? Well, that's 6 and 6, right? That's going to be 6 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared or whatever. Or to shorten it up, square root of 6 squared plus 6 squared. Which comes out to be 8.49 inches. That's the length of the cord. That's the 90 degree arc. To double that arc, 180 degree arc, the length of this cord is just 12 inches. It's not double this. So the length of the cord is not proportional to the degrees of the arc. But a longer cord within the same circle, a longer cord does cut out a larger arc. Something we mentioned briefly last semester, because we did some arches with it, is if I have two cords that intersect. And let's say this cord here is cut into two pieces. One is 4 inches and one is 9 inches. And in this other cord, let's say that this piece here is 3 inches. Do you remember how we find the length of this fourth, the final piece? The product of those pieces, of those intersecting cords, will be the same. So this cord is broken into pieces of 4 and 9. So we're going to do 4 times 9. This one is pieces of 3, and I'll call that x. So 3 times x. So then 4 times 9 is 36 equals 3x. And we divide by the 3. x has to equal 12. This has to be 12 inches here. And it makes sense that looks... A little bit longer than the 9. But the product of those cords will always, the pieces of those cords, I should say, will always be the same for two intersecting cords. So if I give you oh, let's say this here is 8 inches and 9 inches and this is 6 inches. Find x for me.
No, what two pieces get multiplied together here? Eight and nine, and then what other two? Six and X. Good. So eight times nine is seventy-two. And divide by the six. X has equal twelve again. Any questions? So let's say I give you this circle and I give you a twelve inch cord. I'm going to tell you that the radius of this is eight inches. And I'm going to draw this through here if I tell you this here is 5 inches, what's this have to be? 3, very good. Because of, sorry, because of the 8 inch radius from the center out, has to total eight inches. So now with that in mind, over here I'm going to tell you that this is a 16 inch radius and I'm going to tell you that this piece here is six inches. I want to know well, what I really want to know is how long the total cord is. How would I find that? Well, let's look at what I know here. What do I know about that piece? It has to be 10 inches. Because that's just, from here to out here is a radius. It's got to be 16 inches total. Of course, this has to be 16. So if I call this x and x, what I have here is 6 times, this whole thing is going to be 26, has to equal x times x, because that has to be split. I should have given you that that's a right angle. If I give you that that's a right angle, of course, that radius or diameter that intersects a chord at a right angle cuts that chord in half. We discussed that yesterday. That's because of the isosceles triangle thing. So if that's a right angle, it becomes an altitude of the isosceles triangle. and So therefore, it cuts everything in half. So then that would be x times x. So what is 6 times 26? 156. x times x, of course, is x squared. So then what do we have to do? Square root. So square root of 156, 12.49. So that is x is 12.49. So the whole chord is 24.98 inches. I had to give you that's a right angle so that you know that it splits that chord in half. Well, okay, knowing that this is a right angle, we could have also have done that a squared, 10 squared plus 16 squared equals c squared to that side. Otherwise, it actually tell you it would be 10 squared plus x squared equals 16 squared. But yeah. This is just a different way of looking at it, of going about it. talked about these tangents a little bit and how if we have a line that is tangent to a circle and we take the radius of the circle to that point of tangency what do we know about the relationship between that radius and the tangent they form a right angle very good 
Now let's take a second radius. And the line of the tangent line at that point of tangency. Of course, we know that that also forms a right angle. So let's take a look at what we know about this. Of course, we know that this equals this because the radii of a circle are always equal to each other. Well, yeah, we're getting to that. If I cut this across here, this green line is equal to itself, right? So what we now have is we have a triangle where we have two sides and an angle that are the same. Now remember, we, we said you had to be careful when you have an angle and two sides. If the angle isn't between the two sides, you have to be careful. But since this is a right angle, we don't have that problem. Remember, we, there's that possibility of either the triangle could look like that or it could look like this. But since our angle that we have is a right angle, that possibility isn't a possibility. So these two triangles are equal. Because this being a right triangle, if we know two sides, we know the third side. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So since those two triangles are the same, yeah, this side here to there has to equal here to here. And that is actually a rule that develops with our circles. Is if we have two tangent lines that intersect, obviously they must intersect outside the circle because tangent lines never go inside the circle. The distance from that point of intersection, which would be that point, to the point of tangency for each line is going to be the same. So if I have this case here, If I give you that this length here is 13 inches, what do you know about that length? It's 13 inches. It must be the same. Because those are tangents. Now, what if I didn't tell you those are tangents? If we have a radius, and that radius is shown at a right angle, then that indicates that that's a tangent. So I mentioned briefly that the central angle indicates the size of the arc. So if this is a seven degree, 70 degree angle, this is a 70 degree arc. There are other relationships that occur here. We had that inscribed angle. So remember, this is what we call the central angle. Because it's the angle at the center. This is what we call an inscribed angle. Because its vertex is on the circle. It's inscribed on the circle. The inscribed angle is going to be half of the arc. That's going to be 35 degrees. The term for this, by the way, which you'll hear is called the intercepted arc. That's the arc that that angle intercepts at the, on the edge of the circle, on the circumference of the circle. <clears throat> so if I give you that this is the center of the circle here, if I tell you this angle here is 28 degrees. What's this angle here have to be? Well, if this angle is 28 degrees, what's this arc have to be? 56. Very good. That inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. If this arc is 56, what's this angle here have to be? That's a central angle, and the central angle equals the arc. So that must be 56. 
Yes. The central angle is always equal to the arc, and the inscribed angle is always half of the arc. Yeah, if you were to cut this off here, you could find you could find this angle and this angle. So it would be 180 yeah, minus 56 yeah. divided by 2. Um, the 128 triangle is going to be a little bit diff more difficult. Talk so, about this here. You don't know this angle. The 156 goes over here. It's not up here. And this angle right here is going to be different. That's not quite the, the 56. That's actually going to be bigger than the 56. Because it's closer to the arc than the center is. See, as you start, and that's, that's one of the things in these circles. Let's see, okay, so here's my central angle. And let's say that this is a 74 degree arc. Over there. So obviously this is 74 degrees. If I move the vertex of that angle closer to the arc, that angle gets larger. That's got to be greater than 74 degrees. If I move the vertex further away from the arc, that's got to be less than 74 degrees. So as I move the vertex away, it gets smaller. Towards it, it gets larger. And of course, once I get to here, then it's exactly half. That's where 37 degrees kicks in. Now, there are, of course, other relationships. We talked about a tangent angle. So let's have a tangent here. It touches our circle right there. And we'll have a chord or a secant here. Well, where is the vertex of this angle? It's on the circle, right? So this is basically an inscribed angle, even though it's a tangent angle. So if this arc here is 118 degrees, the angle here is half of that. It is 59 degrees. This is 74 and the arc will be 74. The green one that's less than 74, that says. So if that vertex is further from the arc than the center of the circle, it has to be less. This one's closer to the arc than the center of the circle, so that one has to be greater than 74. At this point, that's all we can say about those angles. But let's uh, let's take a look at that. What if we have an angle that's formed inside the circle, but not at the center? Well, to deal with that angle, we have to know both of Let's say we're looking at this angle right here. Now, obviously, with the intersecting lines, that angle is the same. So in order to figure out that angle, we have to know both of the intercepted arcs. So let's say I know this arc here is 62 degrees. Let's say I know that arc here is 42 degrees. If these chords intersected at the center of the circle, what would I say about these two arcs? They'd have to be the same. As the, the intersection of those chords moves further away from the center, the difference between those chords gets larger. But the total intercepted arc, or the difference between the arcs, I should say, gets larger. But the total intercepted arc should stay the same. So when we're dealing with 
these angles like this that are not at the center and are not inscribed, that angle is equal to the average of the intersected arcs. So I would take 42 plus 62 and divide it by 2. That would give me the angle. It ends up being 52 degrees. So these two angles are 52 degrees. So here, I am going to give you that this arc here is 38 degrees, this arc here is 64 degrees, and I want you to find this angle. What is this for? This is just uh, arcs of a circle, um, relationship between arcs of a circle and angles of intersection. So looking at this, what we can actually find from these two arcs, of course, are these angles. And how do we find those angles? You got 38 divided by, or 38 plus 64 divided by 2. 38 plus 64 is 102 divided by 2 is 51 degrees. So these angles are both 51 degrees. We're looking for the purple one up here, though. There you go. It's 180 minus 51 is 129 degrees. Perfect. So what happens if we extend our chords into secants? Remember, the difference between a chord and a secant is the secant keeps going outside the circle. And I want to look at this angle here. Well, if you recall, well, let's say that this, uh, let's give this a 68 degree arc out here. As you recall, this angle here would have to be 34 degrees, half of that arc, because that would be an inscribed angle on the surface of the circle, the vertex on the circle. How does this gray angle out here relate to the 34 degrees? Does it have to be bigger or smaller? It has to be smaller. In fact, the further we move away from the arc, remember, the smaller that angle has to get. Well, the way we measure how much smaller, the further this angle gets away from the arc, this arc over here, the larger this arc is going to get. So it's the size of this arc that tells us how much, how far we have gone away from that angle. So if this arc here is 22 degrees, the way you would find this one, this is what is called an exterior angle, or the intersection of two secants. The intersection of two secants, that angle formed is the big arc minus the little arc divided by 2. So 68 minus 22 is 46, divided by 2 is 23 degrees. Any questions there? 23 is this angle right here.
probably get too far into this. Another rule that does pop up. Deal with these tangents. So we're given those are both right angles. There's a relationship here. If I know this angle here is, let's say, 140 degrees, I know this angle out here. Because this is a four-sided figure. What's the angle sum of a four-sided figure have to be? 4 minus 2 is, yeah, there you go. 4 minus 2 is 2 times 180 is 360. So it has to be a total of 360 degrees. Well, I have 90 here and 90 here. That's 180. Which means the other two angles must add up to the other 180. So when you have that case of intersecting tangents like that, this angle, the central angle here, and the angle of intersection of the tangents are supplements. So over here, if I tell you that this arc here is 80 degrees, and this arc here is 28 degrees, and let's say that I give you this angle here is... 10 degrees and 10 degrees. Can you find that angle there? Angle X. Perfect. So, yeah, we'd be looking for this angle here, which would be 80 minus 28 divided by 2, right? So that's 52 divided by 2, which is 26 degrees. So what's that tell us? These angles are adjacent. They have the same vertex and they're sharing common sides. So I can add them together. This is 46 degrees. 26 plus 10 plus 10. This, ha this here has to be, remember, supplement. 180 minus 46 is 134. And this is the type of problems we're going to run into now is we're going to start looking at, okay, well, and I could add an extra step to this. I could do, let's take it like this. What does, what does this angle here have to be? From here to here. Well, if this is 134 degrees here, that makes this arc 134 degrees, right? If that arc's 134 degrees, this is the inscribed angle. It would have to be half of that, 67 degrees. Now, here's a trickier one for you. What would that angle have to be? Because of the way this one's set up, if this is 10 and 10, that means this arc here and this arc here have to be the same. So if this in here is 28, we would find these arcs by doing 134 minus 28, which is 106. Dividing that by 2 gives us 52 degrees for each of those arcs. Obviously not drawn to scale. So this is a 53 degree arc. This is a 53 degree arc. That means this angle here has to be 26.5. Half of the intersected arc because it's still an inscribed angle. So like I said, that's the type of problems we're going to be running into here is where we have all these different features. In the homework there's going to be Problems where there's just a couple of, you know, radii or chords or whatever to deal with. But then there will be problems where there are chords and secants and radii going all over the place. 
And you have to pick apart how those are related to each other. There will be a quiz coming up, possibly tomorrow. What floor is tomorrow? Okay, let's do that. Let me just make sure when the quiz is. It is tomorrow. Cool. No, I just have it on the next lesson plan as there's a quiz. So let's take a circle here. Yep. That's the center of a circle. That's a right angle there, so that's a tangent. So I'm going to tell you that that angle out there is 50 degrees. That's a right angle. I want to know what that angle there is. So, because these are both tangents here, what do we know about that angle? 130. 130. They're supplements. Those two have to add up to 180. So now if that's 130, what do you know about this angle? 50. If that angle is 50, this angle is 40, right? If that angle is 40, this arc is 40 degrees. If that arc is 40 degrees, this angle is 20. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the homework on these. And if we get to class tomorrow and we have to go over a bunch of the homework questions, we will. But really, the only way to get good at these is to just do them. And rather than me sit here and make up a bunch of examples, there's a bunch of good examples in the homework that are probably better than the ones I can make up. So we'll have you do those. And like I said, if we have to take the day tomorrow and go over those homework examples, we will and put the quiz off for a day. But I'd rather have you guys doing them and trying to, because really the only way to get good at picking stuff out is to try to pick it out. And you may get one where you're stuck on, you have to go do another one and come back to it, something might appear to you. Yeah, since this is inscribed, since its angle, its vertex is on the circle, this angle is half the intercepted arc. Yeah, this is because this is a four-sided figure. Get this angle. There's an alternative way you can go about it, yes. If you did that, you know that this angle here would have to be 360 minus 130 minus 90, which is 140 degrees. Yep, and then since that's our sausage triangle, you're right. Whatever's left out of 180, 180 minus 140 is 40, so each of these would have to be 20. So that's another way you can go about that. 
Yep, that'll work as long as you get to the angle. I mean, all of these angles like this, there's a lot of times there's going to be three or four different ways of. Weight on one of the buttons, that's why. Yeah, when you do it on the test, I don't care how you get there. I mean, there's going to be two, three, sometimes four or five different routes to get around to the angle. Ah, uh, there might would be if you looked hard enough. I'm not seeing one right now. I mean, one way you could go about it, I suppose, is that's 50 degrees. This is a 130 degree arc. So all the way around here is a 220 degree arc. Since that's 220 degrees, this has to be 110 degrees here. Subtract 90 would leave 20 there. So there's another way you could go about it. That one's a little bit longer way to get to it. But yeah, there's always going to be multiple ways to get there. So in the package you have on page 306, you think I had to do 1 through 8 yesterday, so do a 9 through 26 today. And on page 315, 1 through 26. Page 306, 9 through 26, 315, 1 through 26.